Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is the business edition of the weekly news roundup. These are recorded live Friday, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today we are talking about A2 Hosting as our affiliate link. If you are in need of a personal or a business website, consider A2 Hosting. My affiliate link is there on the screen and in the description down below. You can get shared hosting as little as $4 for your first period that you buy it. Um, so you can buy up to two or three years at the promotional rate. And then as you renew it, every chunk that you renew it, the, you know, per chunk, you'll get a discount. So I use VPS hosting on all my clients so that, uh, I have the complete controls over my server. I host my emails, my next cloud, uh, my websites, a variety of different tools and things are all hosted on this works as a great service. Definitely check them out if you are in need of a website. And with that being said, let's jump on over to the business news. First, uh, Apple is to be formally investigated over Spotify's antitrust complaint. So what's going on here is, uh, of course, Spotify kind of got its start with Apple and iTunes. That's kind of where the first place where they launched. Um, and the, the issue is now Spotify, as it's large enough to stand on its own, <laughs> funny how that kind of works, you know, they're large enough to stand on their own. Now they're kind of rebelling against... Uh, Apple's Apple tax, as it's often called in the industry. So, of course, Apple has been pushing more services lately, and they tend to be uh, they tend to be uh, sort of antitrusty in regards to anything that would compete with a internal service. You know, you used to be able to kind of find all sorts of flashlight apps, and then all of a sudden, uh, Apple put a flashlight inside of their core system, and now you can't find flashlight apps anymore. Uh, that is the type of stuff I'm talking about. And then, of course, you can't sideload an app onto an Apple device, at least not easily, um, not without jailbreaking or having access to one of those corporate uh, testing applications. Um, but what they're, they're going to do is when a person signs up on Spotify, they have to pay 30% to Apple and then the renewals are 15% each year thereafter. And Spotify says that no, we should be able, somebody should be able to download the app off, off of Apple's platform, install it, and not have to pay Apple to have the system in there. But on top of that, there are areas because Apple itself is now moving into the podcasting. Of course, Apple's always done podcasting, but they're moving into into the competitive realm with some of these other systems. And what happens is that the tools that Apple is giving to Siri, voice tools and things like that are not allowed on Spotify's app. And Spotify says, no, this is antitrust because they're blocking our features, blocking our innovation because they have a stranglehold over the market. And so it was uh, pointed out that yes, uh, they are going to be investigated in the EU over antitrust with this issue. All right. Um, this is a fun one. Another one, Amazon. Check a look at my Amazon link up above. If you buy on Amazon, that's a great way to help support the channel. Um, but sometimes they do really bad and really stupid things. <laughs> And in this case, Amazon fired at least seven pregnant workers. So this is just seven of them came forward in a uh, just with lawsuits. So there's probably been a lot more than that. Uh, but basically what would happen is these people would inform their boss that they were pregnant and the boss would just be like, later, you're fired. And just, of course, hire someone else so they didn't have to get in the middle of, you know, all sorts of other things. So this caused some lawsuits. And uh, there's at least seven cases where, and six of them, we said down here, six of them were settled outside of court. Uh, but there's actually seven known cases that have been filed against Amazon for discrimination for being pregnant, which, yes, is against the law. Um, and, you know, this is, this is why some people are calling for, you know, calling for big companies to be broken up, calling for more regulation. I don't really like regulation, but at the same token, sometimes you look at this and go, you know what, guys, y'all are just being stupid. And if you are not going to have the morals and the ethics to not fire pregnant women because they're pregnant um, and other abominable things, 
yeah, maybe we do need to start looking at a little bit of regulation here and there. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Um, I, I could be swayed to either side of the argument. Um, let me know what you think. Oh boy, we uh, we talked about this one um, with AT and T a few months back, where uh, they started. Um, it used to be if you had a, a phone service, you had you know whatever your service was, and you're moving, for example, you cut off your service at you know the third of April, and then they would cut off the service because when you pay your bill, you're basically you're paying for the month ahead. So you pay your bill and then when you cut off your service, they used to issue you a check for the unused days. AT&T came out and was like, nah, we're not going to do that anymore. Uh, you cancel service. Hey, you can keep using the service, but we're not going to refund you the money. It's going to be cut off effective as the day you're, you know, the day that, that the payment ran out. And this caused a little bit of a ruckus, but what can you do anyway? Because it's not like you have a choice in who you're your ISPs and things like that happen to be. Well, Charter is the next one to get into this. So as effective after June 23rd and consistent with the terms of service that they changed on you without you knowing, um, or you didn't know anyway because you didn't read it, um, they are no longer providing a pro rata credit for anything sold. So whatever you've paid them, when you move out, hey, you can keep using the service until that time. Well, that doesn't help me. I don't have keys for the place anymore, yo. I think that it should be mandated that, yeah, the person's moved out, the service is turned off, and they get their money back. I, I, this is one of these cases. I could be swayed either way because this is a company saying, screw you, we carry everything. And that's the type of company that can, that can you know, Go, go burn in hell or something? I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, uh, again, I could be swayed, but I think this is bad. I think this is bad on Charter Spectrum because, you know, somebody's moving and they don't have access. You're not providing the service. Pay them back for the unused amount of service. You know, I mean, it, yeah. Yeah. Now, there's other industries that don't necessarily pay you back. Most web hosts, you used to be able to get all that back. Most of them now have shifted to a model that uh, that they won't do that anymore. Um, so be aware of that as well. All right, so of course we all know that uh, that all sorts of tech companies really love to uh, follow Apple. They just love to get in there with Apple and just duplicate everything they're doing. Samsung has just been so copying Apple, man. They copy their notches. They copy their getting rid of the, the uh, SD cards. They copy getting rid of the phone, headphone jacks. They just copy everything. They got so copy happy, they ended up copying the holding it wrong bug. So there was a uh, the Galaxy Tab S5e. If you hold it just right, it loses all connection with the antenna. Sounds like the iPhone 4, doesn't it? <laughs> it's hold it wrong gate, right? So if you uh, have one of these tablets and uh, they say what the orientation is. Um, so you, when you hold uh, the device, uh, when the lower left corner of the device is covered with your hand, um, then it kills all access to the um, it kills all access to the Wi-Fi. So here here's a picture of it here, and I forget. I think if the cameras, it's the cameras one direction. They tell you here in the article. So if you hold it down in this portion here, it completely disconnects the network from it. <laughs> so yes, you are holding it wrong. If you have one of those, you're holding it wrong. Everyone loves your Elon Musk news. Um, so uh, the U.S. courts are finally giving the go-ahead for Musk to face the defamation charges over this cave spat. So if you uh, don't remember this, uh, this uh, Vernon Unsworth did some heroic um, guidance uh, and um, project leading, trying to rescue those boys that were stuck in the cave. Well... Musk comes up to be, mm, I'm Musk, I am going to solve everything. And, 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 and what Musk did there is to me demonstrates that he's not this brilliant genius we all think him of as. He just has some basic ideas and too much money. And so he's like, we're going to build a submarine and get these boys out. And everybody in the diving community is looking at this going, 
That'll never work. You know nothing about diving. You can't just take a submarine the size of a kid and put the kid in it and woo, the kid's there. It was just a giant publicity stunt. All right, because there's places you had to fold and bend into weird places. There's times you had to take your oxygen mask off and push it in front of you through the cave to get in and out and around. It wasn't a simple, trivial task of putting the kid in a little submarine and carry it around. And so this guy comes out and says, this will never work. Musk, go back to building cars. You don't know anything about cave diving. So Musk retaliates because Musk's ego is about the size of an ant. And he retaliates by simply calling this guy a pedo, saying that he has, he moved here so that he could marry a child bride. And then he starts blabbing off his face, not only on Twitter, which always gets him in trouble, but then he unprovokedly sends a big email to somebody at BuzzFeed, literally saying, this is off the record. You can't do that, just an FYI. If you want to say something to a reporter off the record, you have to send a message. I have information. It's got to be off the record. They have to reply in with a consent, and then you can talk about your off the record conversation. Musk just without provo uh, provocation, since this is all off the record and rants and rants and rants about this guy, uh, Unsworth, being some pedo. And uh, and the, <laughs> the BuzzFeed reporter published it because that's not privileged conversation. <laughs> he didn't agree that it was off the record. And so it caused a big thing. And so Vernon sued him in <laughs> two countries <laughs> over defamation charges. And uh, Musk has been trying to get this thrown out. And the judge finally looked and said, no, if you just insulted him and said he's a stupid pedo on Twitter, he said he would have let the king thing go because that's just Musk being on Twitter. But he said because it was on Twitter and it was multiple situations and he contacted a journalist and he did all these types of things, the judge says, oh, yeah, you're going to court over this. And so this will be an interesting case. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be watching. Uh, I hope they throw the book at him because, frankly, he needs it. This man needs to be humbled. All right. This man needs to be humbled. Um, apparently what we're doing isn't working. But uh, what do you think? Um, should he be humbled? Should he not? Um, I don't know. And now for our feature story. Uber and Lyft, it turns out, are the biggest contributors to San Francisco's traffic congestion. What? <laughs> Isn't this what they were trying to solve? Um, yes. And I think it's kind of an I, I think it's kind of an, an end game thing. It's not a uh, Uber and Lyft are are playing the long game to try and cut back on congestion. They're not playing the short game. I'm not surprised that this is causing a mass increase in congestion. The reason is most people in traffic are trying to get from point A to point B. When you're driving for Uber and Lyft, you're literally in your car driving for traffic waiting for your app to beep. So there are literally a ton more people just driving without a place to go, just waiting for their app to beep so that they know where to go. Okay? That's kind of the case. And so I'm not surprised. Now, the end game for Uber and Lyft is to have autonomous cars and to cut back on car ownership so that they're the ones that have the cars. And when that end game, if that end game is ever fully met, then it actually will decrease congestion. Although still, so basically what happened is they flooded the, the streets with their cars. In this case, it's the individual contractor's owner's car. They flooded the streets with the cars, but everyone else is still, still driving their own cars. When a lot less people are driving their cars, they will still have the same amount of cars, but other people will leave their cars at home. Is that a world we're going to get to? Probably not. I hope not, because that just contributes to that crazy socialist sounding smart city where everyone's like, you know, they're sitting here going, car ownership's too expensive. Let us take care of it. Well, that's a great thing from the person owning the cars. I kind of want to own my own car. I want to decide at three in the morning, I'd like to get up and drive somewhere without anybody knowing where I'm going and what I'm doing. And that includes the app and whatever else, you know? I mean, that's that's kind of the thing. That, that's the part of privacy, but this is, um, this is not it. But... Anyway, this study was looking at, uh, they're looking at this traffic between 2010, 2016 in San Francisco. They found an increase by about 60% and Uber and Lyft were responsible for 30 of that 60%, over 30 of that 60%. 
Um, because like I said, Uber and Lyft, you get in your car and you go to the city. And a lot of people in these cities don't live in the city. They just drive to the city because there's higher fees. So they'll get up in the morning, they'll drive to the city and they don't got anywhere to go. So they're just driving around the city waiting for their app to be. I'm not surprised by this result. If these guys win in their end game, the congestion is going to go down. I'm personally not convinced they're going to win in the end game, at least not here in the States. They have a much greater chance of doing that in European countries and in other countries that are, you know, that do more bike riding, do more public transportation, do more less vehicle ownership, in which case they're really not solving the problem. They're just causing a shift in the ownership. So what do you guys think? Um, am I right? Am I wrong? Uh, are you surprised or are you not surprised? Is this what you would expect? Uh, what's your thought about this? Are, are you going to give up your car someday because Uber and Lyft are becoming uh, ubiquitous? Let me know in the comments down below. Help support the channel with the links up above or in the description down below. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.